One last topic for the day, identity and equality. Here, because we have data values that can change over time, mutable data types, we need to be able to distinguish between when two things are equal and when they are really the same thing. Let's take a look. So to get our example started, I'm going to create a new list with heart and diamond as two strings in its contents. So this is a list which is a mutable data type. I can assign a new name to this existing value. So now S is the same thing. And I can show that these two things are equal just as I have all along in this course with the equality operator. But there's something new. I can also show that they are in fact the same thing. On the other hand, if I call the list constructor to create a new list that happens to have the same contents as suits, now T is also heart diamond. T is also equal to suits, but T is not suits. The difference is S is suits, whereas T is not. And I can even write T is not suits. Now the is operator is a new operator that tells you whether two expressions evaluate to the same object. Now why do we care whether the object is different or the same? Well, if two objects are different and one of them changes, the other one doesn't change. But if two objects are the same, well, there's really only one object there and its changes are reflected, regardless of which name you use for that object. So, for instance, if uh, I extend suits to have two more elements, speed and club, Suits now has all four suits, so does S, because S is just another name for that same object. However, T is unchanged, because T is not suits. Changing one doesn't change the other. In fact, they're not even equal anymore. Okay, so I have suits, I have S, and I have T. Let's see what happens if I make other changes. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change T element index 0 to be s. What have I done? Well, I've assigned the first element of t to be this entire list. Now it is the same list, which also goes by the name suits. So if I go with suits, and I append to it another suit, a joker, and then I look at t again, t has changed. It now has joker in it. And likewise, if I refer to the element in index 0 and I pop off its last element, joker, then it has changed, but suits has changed as well. So what's going on here? Let's take a look at an environment diagram. Here's almost the same example that I showed you before, and we can watch what happens. By box and pointer diagrams, we can show how these things interact. So suits is the name of a list. And we give s, and we bind the name s to that same list using an assignment statement. This is the same rule we've always had. Evaluate the thing on the right, bind it to the name on the left. Now, we also evaluate the thing on the right here, and that uses the list constructor to create a new list, which we bind to the name t. So now we have two different lists that happen to have the same contents. But if I change one, the other will not change. So suits plus equals is the same as extend and we'll pass in a sequence and all of those elements will be appended to the end of suits. So now we have heart, diamond, spade, club. And then with another uh, element assignment statement, we're going to change the element in index zero to suits. What that does is it gets rid of the old value of heart and instead replaces it with this entire list. So when I print this out, I see the contents of that list as the first element nested within a larger list. Now, as we saw before, appending to suits will affect what happens when you print out T because suits is part of T. So the joker appears there 
And likewise, when I pop off the last element of the element at index zero of t, what I'm really popping off is joker from this list. And so it's gone. 